Hey everyone, we are the Good Doctors of Abbey Research. I'm Dr. Aaron. I'm Dr. Kristen. And you are all very welcome to our continuing coverage of Hallmark Christmas movies throughout the month of November and into December. Uh, we have a bit of a dud, unfortunately, uh, for our um, Hallmark movie this week. We did, we decided to stick with Hallmark movies and mysteries because we had so much success with Two Turtle Doves, which I'm still not over. Uh, and we watched and reviewed Holiday Hearts, which aired this past Saturday on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, starring our beloved, Dr. Kristen and I's beloved Hallmark star, Ashley Williams, who is, as always, a delightful puppy of an actress. <laughs> She's just a joy. She's just an earnest. We love her. Like, and believable. I find yes. her believable in everything I see her in. I did yes. not care for this movie. I thought it was boring. I didn't care for what happened to the characters. She was 100% believable in her relationships, in her job, in everything. She's that yep. honest all the time. Um, so the premise of this movie is second chance romance is our big trope. So they were Which we are here for. We love a second chance. They were friends in high school. Uh... Um, was Peyton. Yes, Peyton. I wrote down the names. Peyton told Ben how she felt yep. for him right before he was leaving for medical school. She remembers that, that he didn't do anything. He never called her. Yep. He never contacted her, which is, a bit, like, honestly, it's kind of a bit of a dick move. She was like, okay, cool. Like, you could have sent me a letter. It was, that was kind of the thing. I was like, the whole movie, I was like, so he was, he was in love I, with her, apparently. He was in love with her, didn't use his words no. for 10 years. Yeah. And then he doesn't use his words for the whole movie. Nope. Until the end. And then says, move with me to Honduras. For a job I don't have yet. For three years when you've built your entire life and family in this town of Birch Creek, I, Ohio. Ohio. And oh, by the way, this brand new, this entire like focus of this movie is you planning this festival to have a job change, but please... Yeah. Uproot yourself and move to Honduras. You have told me now, disclose to me that you are. This so is your. Excited. This is your life's dream. This is your dream to move from accounting to event planning. I helped you plan this event, and then at this event, I am going to ask you to move to Honduras. Yeah, and Honduras is a lovely country. I'm sure it's very nice. It it needs doctors. I I don't doubt that it does. I'm sure it also needs event planners, especially yeah. in the capital. Who knows? But you know, the other thing, and this is just one of those like, oh, come on, guys. Like, there are visas. Yeah. Like, you can't just go. You can't just up and go. You can't just um, go. Which I understand is a level of realism I'm asking for for Hallmark that is inappropriate. That's but when you're already annoyed at something, the little things become even worse. And at that point, I was bored and frustrated. And, like, they had chemistry, but yes. not enough for me to buy that, like, she would be okay with... 10 years of silence. Yeah, and their conversation about it was weird. Because uh, even in that conversation, he didn't say, that would have been a great time for him to say, like, I've been in love with you since we were 15 and I screwed up. And then I never thought you wanted to hear from me again because I screwed up. Which but is exactly where I thought it was going. And then it didn't go there. And I was like, what have we been doing? I know. And then he didn't say anything. He was like, oh, well, you know. And she was like, so then that led her to still believe that he did not have feelings for her. And then he revealed them at the Canada Christmas ball, whatever. Uh, yeah, so uh, there were some things that I love about Hallmark movies that like this one was really explicit about. So one of the tropes we haven't talked about yet this season, I think we talked about last season, was that there's if there's a fancy event at the end of the movie the female protagonist is always in a red dress always if you guys have not noticed this it is true i would wager in like 90 percent of hallmark christmas movies so the fact that they made a thing of her like buying a red dress it was amazing i, I thought was hilarious but only for that trope um there was we have to have a hot minute for that performative diversity moment with the Spanish teacher. I don't understand what the point of that was. Like in a super, and again, a super white movie with only white characters and only 
like the only black people I saw, the only people of color that I saw were townspeople that showed up to the party and in the background, again, yep. in the background milling around the town. Yep. So people of color live in Birch Creek. They just don't have experiences that are storytelling, which is ridiculous, but except for Mr. What's-His-Face, the Spanish teacher, and it felt real forced and real awkward. Yeah, I didn't love it. I didn't love it. Um, no, I was just, it was just weird. And then it, fe it felt like a tick box exercise. It's like, oh, we're done. To use our favorite uh, quote from the end of the Nailed It show on Netflix, you're done. You're like, done. You're done with it. No more. Um, we can go back to all the white people now. It was really awkward. Um, and we did get bingo. We've decided we got bingo. So those of you, if you're playing at home, um, the line that is uh, holiday baking, there was Christmas cookie baking. There was a lot of real hot chocolate in those glass cups at the cafe, but there was lots, there were a couple of fake hot chocolates as well. There were stories from the childhood, obviously, from lots of characters. So um, many stories from childhood. Second chance romance was our big arc trope. And yep. uh, it did pass the Bechdel test. We wager there was at least one conversation between Peyton and her mother um, that did not revolve around any men or relationships to men. Her relationship but it revolved. Her it was parents. still weird. That whole relationship with her parents and the inn was weird. That whole you can plan a major party even in a small town in three days was weird. And keep it completely secret and absolutely nobody picked up on the fact that she didn't have anything planned. Like, y'all, there are vendors in that town that would have had to have something. Yeah, like, people would have said, oh, Peyton hasn't called me yet to order bulk trees or wrap. And let me tell you what drama that would have been, too. Like, yeah. we've been providing the cupcakes for ten years! And, like, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the, like, WhatsApps going around the town that are like, bitch hasn't called me! <laughs> like, my, my, like, level for small town drama is and all is and always will be stars hollow and i yep. just think of like the absolute scandal yep that would have we would have heard about from all the secondary characters in stars hollow that were not being consulted about the cake or yep. the decorations or who was yep. buying the food and like i understand yep. that, like her sister was the chef and she was catering it but like everything else that goes into event planning and nobody had heard from her, and it was three days before the event? No. Nope. Nope. The gossip tree would have been... Would have been going nuts. Chirping. Um, yeah, but other than that, it was innocuous. I don't... It was another very same Hallmark movie. It was I, all fine. I had hopes. I had high hopes after uh, Two Turtle Doves that maybe Movies and Mysteries was going to be a little bit more adventurous with their storylines. And you know what? We have so much left. Maybe they will be. Maybe they will. Maybe they will. It's only Thanksgiving week. Um, yes. And this is kind of when they start to really do their big movies. They're ratcheting up. There's one every night this week. Yeah. Thanksgiving. We will be talking about one that aired last night. Last night. That is our next one called A Christmas Duet, which aired on Hallmark Channel. With um, the girl from Nashville. And the hot guy from How to Get Away with Murder. Yep. Noah, I think his name is Noah in real life. I'm not sure. Her name um, is Charlie in real life. I don't remember who she was on Nashville. Nashville. I don't remember her character name on Nashville. I have largely excised that show from my brain. This is the first one that we're covering that um, main characters are people of color. Um, they've had a couple of, of ones on Movies and Mysteries and Hallmark Channel that we just haven't covered yet. So, we haven't gotten to, yeah. Um, we, and I'm excited because I think it's second chance music romance, which like... I Done. Done. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I'm excited, cautiously excited about that one. Um, but I think that's all we have for Holiday Hearts. Like, meh. It was, if it's on, you know, it's fine to fold laundry too. Yeah, it's, I like Ashley Williams. I like Paul Campbell in this one. Um, they were cute together. Uh, yeah, yep. I would have something, I would have something else to do. If you're like filling out Christmas cards, throw yeah. it, on, throw it yep. on. You're, like, yep, you're going through Tumblr, have fun. Yeah, <laughs> you're shopping online for Christmas stuff on your laptop, Christmas presents. 
Throw it up. This is perfect background noise. Yep. Uh, but for that, I think that's everything we have to say. Um, we'll be back again next week with Christmas duets. Yes, we will. A Christmas duet. We're excited about it. So I hope you set the DVR for it. If not, find it somewhere. It'll be aired again 15 times between now and when we talk about it. Don't so worry. Join us next week for a Christmas duet. But we're the good doctors of Abbey Research for now. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.